Hello everybody, it's Jane Mamalmi, and today I have a fun scrapbooking project for you in the six by eight size using sketches. So the creative design team and I are doing our collaboration this month using sketches from the sketchbook that we have produced. This sketchbook has 42 sketches complete with cutting dimensions, so there's no guesswork, and it is available as a PDF linked in the description below, so be sure to check that out. So this sketchbook was designed to be sort of like a days of December type sketchbook so you can document all of your December memories, but I'm gonna be using it today for a Halloween project. I'm doing a Halloween through the years book where each page is going to represent a year in my kids' dress up history so that they can look back through this book over the years and see what they dressed up as and remember where they were when they weren't trick or treating because we've moved a lot. They love looking at these pictures in all of my scrapbooks. So I thought it would be fun to have it all in one place for them to look back on. So let's go ahead and dive into the project and I'll explain more about it as we go. Here's the sketchbook and you can have it printed and bound. Some of the girls have done that and it looks really nice. I've so far just kept it on my iPad and um, I plan to get, to get it printed, but just wanted to show you what all is in here. So we've even got some prompts. So you remember to take all of those great pictures in December. Um, and then there are six by eight pages complete with the cutting guide dimensions. I'm gonna go ahead and get started and I'll show you how I'm using this for my Halloween book. So here on my desk is what I'm gonna be working with. I have my six by eight album and I have all of my photos printed from the first Halloween that my daughter dressed up. So I've got starting with 2014 and I just printed these out, most of them as three by four. So I collaged two three by fours on a four by six for, um, you know, when I create three by fours and I have a whole video on how I do that and I will link that below. I love three by fours for the six by eight um, album size because then you can fit more and so each one I've just labeled what year it is on the back so today I know I'm going to be working with this boo crew paper this is a collection that I love it is from last year and it is still available and these colors are going to work well with a lot of my photos so I'm going to pull out the ones that I know I'm going to want to use um, this one and then any of them that have some pinks uh, this has some pinks, but I think I'll pull these ones. So these are both. This is 2019, 2020, and that's 2020. I could do this one also. This was last year. Um, the pinks would go well with this. I'm going to wait. I might use the Fabulous collection because I think the color, the Harry Potter colors might work better for that. But I've got plenty of photos to choose from to start here. And so I'm just going to start with one at a time. Here are the photos I'm going to start with for my first page. I just trimmed them with my little Fiskars photo trimmer to three inches because remember they were four by six. So just trim those apart. And here is one of the pages from this sketchbook. So as you can see, you get the cutting diagrams and the sketches, so there's no guesswork at all. This is the sketch that I'm gonna be working from today. As you can see, there are three three by three photos, but I have two three by four photos. So what I'm gonna do is use this as a jumping off point, and I'm gonna kind of put my photos angled like that and then in that third photo spot since I don't have the photo I'm going to add maybe some stickers or a little embellishment cluster something like that now these lines right here are for journaling if you want to add journaling on here and then this circle here represents the day so if you're going to be using this as a December daily type sketchbook this is where you would put like the one for December 1st for me since this is my Halloween through the years I'm going to put 2016 right here because that's the year that these photos are from. And since I'm not using these exact sizes, I am just going to, there's minimal cutting here anyway, but it tells you exactly how big to cut the cutting mat, the photo mats, but I'm just going to cut a three and a quarter by four and a quarter inch photo mat for each of my photos. So I'm going to set this aside and then we're gonna to get to work on putting our little layout together. 
I decided to go with a double mat because like I normally do, I wanted a white mat around my photo, but I also wanted that pop of color. So I did a quarter inch extra around my photos for each mat. And then I decided that they didn't quite fit on the page how I liked them with the double mat, so I cut the smaller photo down to three by three, which is the size that was in my sketch. And then I also eventually now at this point cut the mats down so that I only have a 16th inch border of the white and an eighth inch border of the wild berry. So for example, for the three by three photo, the white mat is cut to three and an eighth by three and an eighth, and the wild berry is three and three eighths by three and three eighths. So the white border is just a little smaller. So there's this cool paper in that paper pack that has all of these little words. So I just used my paper trimmer to trim some of those off. And now I'm pulling some of the stickers off of the sticker sheet. I thought that this cauldron was perfect for my daughter's witch outfit. So I did take some of the stick off of those stickers just by rubbing it on my clothes. And uh, cause I was at a retreat while I was recording this. That's why I don't have my normal setup here but I didn't have my anti-static powder bag I typically would use that but I wanted to take some of the stick off so I could move these stickers around a little bit and then I liked these hocus pocus words because that also went with the witch theme but in the end I do change those because they don't stand out quite enough there's also these fun bright colored pumpkins in the collection and these are just always great um, for embellishment clusters. They tend to just kind of go with anything. Pumpkins are a great accent. So here's where I decided that I don't like Hocus Pocus because it was just blending in with that black background too much. So I pulled in some of those little word strips that came from that patterned paper. And then there are these little candy stickers. There's a lollipop and then a little um, candy and a candy wrapper and then there's these little stars that are so tiny they're just perfect for scattering around your page and I wanted to just create those visual triangles so I was just pointing to the oranges I wanted to create a visual triangle with those orange embellishments with the wild berry and then I've also got a little light pink one and then I wanted to add a little bit of extra dimension to this sticker here. So I added some thin 3D foam tape to the back. Now you guys know I like the thin 3D foam tape because it adds some dimension without too much dimension. And especially in these little books, it's really nice to have just a very small amount of dimension because you're a little bit more limited on space in these smaller albums. I also found this small spider web on the sticker sheet and I thought that would look cute in this little cluster and then I have it hanging off the end and that helps me get double duty out of this web and I can also stick the other half somewhere else. So I'm going to stuck it, stick it right behind this little um, date area. I've got silver glitter that I just had a little scrap circle of silver glitter laying on my desk and I thought, oh, that is perfect. And so I think I'm going to do the silver glitter for the uh, border around all of my dates and then I still need to add the year. I haven't decided what stamp set or dies I'm going to be using for that yet. So I'll probably be showing that in my next installment of these videos. My favorite part of these pages are these little iridescent ghosts. They are just so cute. They're sticky backed sequins and you get a few sheets like this on the little sheet that, that is available with this collection. And I just think that little shine makes the page. So we're gonna do one more layout and stay tuned for my big goof up here. <laughs> but at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you how to fix that. Cause we all do goof ups, right? We all make mistakes on our layouts and need to come up with how to fix it. So here I'm using a flip flap and that's what I'm gonna mess up in a little bit. Like I said, I was at a retreat, so I was sort of chatting and not completely paying attention to everything I was doing. You guys can't relate, right? So um, I had, I put that four by six photo in the flip flap and I cut it down just slightly. So the white backing of the flip flap photo is cut to four by six. And then I trimmed my photo down to three and seven eighths by 
uh, five and seven eighths. So there's a 16 inch, 16th of an inch border all the way around. So I cut all of those little background papers according to the sketch. And um, so that made it super easy. I know they all fit on my six by eight page and I chose some busier papers. This paper pack has some busy papers, um, which are sometimes hard to use, but because they are cut down into these small strips, it makes them a little bit easier to use. So notice I've got this big star one, which um, because there's so much black background and just the white stars, um, it makes it a little bit less busy and it works well between the, the busy papers on the side. Okay, so here's where I'm making my mistake. I'm putting the flip flap down straight on my page. Now you guys who watch my channel know I don't typically put my flip flaps right onto the page. I put them onto the page protector. That's just my preference. Um, and I'm gonna explain to you at the end why this also doesn't work. I was gonna try to make it work and just cut a slit in my page protector and um, have it stick through that and available to flip up on the outside, but it doesn't work with this album and I'll explain why at the end. So I'm decorating that flip flap. Since the two inside photos are three by four, I'm mounting this three by four onto a four by six piece of paper. Again, it was one of those busier papers, but since I have most of it covered, it works and just adds a fun little border around that photo. And then this photo on the inside, I, um, you know, just mounted right onto that base page. And even though it's a larger photo covering it, that's okay. So I'm gonna end up adding some more stickers from that sticker sheet. Some of them are going to be sticking out from underneath the flip flap and some of them are going to be on top. So this spider here, I thought would be fun to put right on top of the flip flap. I had a big empty corner in that photo and there was a house in the background uh, Behind, that was behind my house. This was in, at my old house and I really just did not like that red house in the background So I tried to cover it as much as I could with that spider and since we have the flip flap you have to be mindful of the embellishments because you are going to be you need to be able to lift that flap up so a lot of times i'll overlap my photos with the embellishments but i couldn't do that with the flip flap so it was helpful to put the spider on top of the flip flap and then i just cut its little web off and i put that straight onto the page so that it didn't interfere with the flap there's all these fun little bats. There's, I think, four or five of them on the sticker sheet in all different colors. So those were fun to add to the page. I'm gonna add my little glitter circle here and the little white circle is gonna go on top of that for my date. I have more of these little strips that are cut from that patterned paper that I'm gonna to use to embellish on top of the flip flap in the other corner. So I'm kind of balancing out the corners there. And then I'm gonna pull in some other stickers from the sticker sheet. I really liked this bats with the moon and thought that that would look fun peeking out from behind the flip flap. And I kept lifting up the flip flap because I wanted to make sure that the stickers look good when I lift up the flap and see them on the photo underneath. And then I also wanted to make sure they looked good sticking out from behind the flip flap. So you kind of have to be conscious of both ways of doing that. But it's really fun to add the flip flap on these pages or any scrapbook pages. I use them a lot on my 12 by 12 pages as well because it allowed me to add these extra photos in this small real estate. So the flip flaps do come in other sizes as well. So this is a four by six, but you can also get it in three by four, three by three, two by two, and then even bigger sizes as well that would work on larger format scrapbook pages. So here are my favorite little ghost sequins again. We are gonna scatter those around and then um, add a few more stickers. I really liked this boo. Notice the terrifying little tab that I have under there. My friend was, oh my gosh, she really loves Halloween. Her anniversary is on Halloween, she and her husband. It's her favorite holiday and she goes all out and her makeup was um, pretty terrifying. <laughs> And then here we are, my husband and I just wearing our Starbucks aprons that we've had for years ever since we worked at Starbucks in college. And that's just what we wear every year. We don't get super into it, but I love getting into dressing my kids up. They love dressing up. I love, um, 
you know, helping them come up with their costumes and all that. But I don't know. We're just not really super into dressing up. But I'm curious. Do you guys dress up for Halloween with your kids or grandkids? Or um, how do you feel about that? Let me know in the comments below. And now let's fix this little goof up. Okay, we're gonna fix my flip-flop mistake now, but I wanted to point out, so I've got everything in the album. This page is gonna be my cover page. So I'm gonna have the Halloween Through the Years title on here, and I'm not gonna have a photo. And then we're gonna start with 2014 and then 2015. So I've got even years on the left and odd years on the right. So I know that my 2020 is gonna have to be on the left. So I've got that already in a left page. So when you're adding flip flaps, you have to make sure that you've got it on the right page because it's hard to get it up once it's down. So everybody makes mistakes, right? I wanna show you how I'm gonna fix this. It's not gonna be perfect, but nobody is gonna know, I don't think, except for me. So what I did was I tore the, the flip flap off of the page after I realized that I don't want it right on the page. First of all, because I just don't like doing it that way and I wasn't thinking, but also because if this flap is lifting up and these pages are side loading, I would have had to really finagle and bend that flip flap to get it up through the slit that I cut and work to work on the outside. So it's just better to have it on the outside of my page protector, unless I had the flip flop going sideways, but I hadn't done that. So I've got some marks here, but don't worry, we're gonna line it up exactly, and you're not gonna notice. So to adhere a flip flop, and this is how I normally do it. I do it on the outside, so I put my page in the page protector, now what I did was I very carefully tore this off of the page. I was careful to try my best not to let it rip up above where the page protector or where the flip flap is gonna be. So I don't have any rips above that. Everything that tore is still on this flip flap and I stuck some red line tape on there. So this red line tape is super, super sticky. It's probably just as sticky, if not more sticky, than the original tape that was on there. And I put it right over that paper. So we've got our paper there still that's gonna cover. So again, flap is up and adhesive is facing me. And then we will fold it back. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna open this up so I can see exactly where I'm putting it and I can adhere it right down. So that bat is not gonna look exactly perfect because we're gonna have some paper over it, but you know, that's okay. And then you know what I can do is I can actually put the bat on the top of the page protector. I'm gonna try that. Okay, again, not totally perfect, but I think that's gonna blend a little better by being on the top. And I'm gonna just put a little bit of liquid glue on the outside here so that those little pieces that we're having trouble that we're kind of lifting up will stay down. And then we've got that right back in place. Okay, so it's not completely perfect, but you know what? It's gonna work for me and this functions well. You can see this a little bit, but it's not a huge deal. I could even put another uh, you know, strip of these up here if I wanted. But I'll add the date here eventually and then we will call this good. So here's a look how that turned out when it's not in the page protector. I love these little holographic ghosts. They're just so fun. And of course this doesn't look nice now, but most of that is going to be hidden when we slide it in. And then here is our close up of that other page. Really love how this turned out. And I've got the first two pages of my little Halloween through the years book complete. Click the playlist on the left to see what the other girls have created with the sketchbook. And then the video on the right is another one of mine I think you might enjoy. I've got the sketchbook linked in the description below if you are interested in purchasing one for yourself, as well as all the other supplies I used are listed below. Thanks for watching and have a great day.